Don't put any music on yet. Okay, bro. Um, let, let me know, know if you can, can hear. hear. And then um, we'll, we'll do, do a, a we'll run a test. test. All right, man. Let me know if you got me, and then we'll go from there. All right. I'm not gonna say any. I can't do anything until we get, till I hear from you. And then I'll, as soon as I hear from you, I'll run the test. All right? That should, so my voice is coming through, right? Check. And there's that. All right. Okay, man. Okay, so. Okay. All right, I hear you. Okay. okay. This, Jeff, this is me right now. I'm talking with my, just my microphone, okay? And we, we, put, we put a gate, we put a gate onto the handhelds, okay? Wait, where are you at? We put a, hey, can you? Bro, text, text me, me, yo, what's up, dog? Text, text me, me which camera you're, you're seeing, seeing right now. now. Okay. okay. Okay, I'm, I'm going to just, just set, set the, the mic, mic on, on the table. table. Here. I'll, I'll set, set the, the mic, mic on, on the table. table. All right, so this is me talking, testing with the mic, it, like at arm's length. This is ideally, I want to be able to be this close to the microphone. And still, so, can you just... Can you just put that camera on the live stream? That camera right there. No. It was good, man. Yeah, it was good. Fuck. Okay, listen, man. I think, no, no. I think you're in the back of the room. So, okay, camera above the door. The camera, the camera be behind, behind me right now, or but it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. So listen, this I want to be able to be this close to both cameras. I want to be here, and with, I mean, with to, to this close to both microphones. I want to have my lab mic on, and I want to be able to hold the mic right out to here. How's that sound? Good. Give me as soon as you give me the update. We'll go from there, and we'll see how we go. And. So, all right, we're going to just keep talking until we get, until I hear from you. And if we have no, nothing going on, a little more gate, but it's good overall. A little more gate, meaning that just fine tuning. Hey, can you give it a little more gate, just a tiny bit? Uh, we want, he's still hearing a tiny bit of echo when I hold the mic like this. So whatever, whatever will change that. And remember, it's the handheld mics. All right, hang on, dude. We're fine tuning. We're, we just changed it just a little bit, Jeff, right now. So you got to give it 20 seconds and then we'll be ready to go. Dude, it's crazy. Like 2 dB. Yeah, he went down 4 dBs. So let's see how it is right now. I'm going to keep holding the mic. I think that's what we need to get. I think we're going to see how we are right now, and then let's go from here. Dude, are you staying for class or are you leaving? I've got to go talk to someone. All right. All right. All right. That's good, man. We'll be in touch next week. All right. All right, man. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, man. Dude, sounds perfect, he says. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So, so here, here, this is for, yeah, it's out here. And well, hang on, I want to turn my mic off. Yeah, so right there. 
Jeff, Jeff, yo, what's up, man? Jeff, we're fine-tuning right here. And and I don't have to be this close, but it's it's nice if I am. And, and then, then here, if, if we're, we're talking, talking right... Okay, this is me talking right into the mic. So you can change... This is me talking right into the mic. So you can see we got a lot. Of, okay, and now this is me out here. So ideally, if we, if we lower... Lower it even a little, but it's directed toward me, so most likely it's going to be more like this. Abe, instead of me like this, it's more going to be like this. Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're good. Jeff, uh, I think we got, I think, I, think we, I think we lowered the gate a little bit, or raised the gate, and I think we're, this is about where we're going to be. What's up, man? So let me know what you think. And then we're good. Dude. Yeah, the thing is, I'm just worried that it's very loud, so we might not be hearing the tiny little echoes. Yeah, yeah. But Jeff, but Jeff is, he's listening to the stream with headphones on. We're fine for today. Oh, right, right, right. Right. Right, right, right. right. Abe is saying that it's, I think we're good for today. All right, dude. Dude, you rock, man. And now we know how to adjust the gate. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks man. Yeah. yeah. Dude, you can put... Go ahead, you can put music on. We're ready.
So again, as I, as I say, I think just about every time, if you come in late, there are always seats down in the front. So come, and, come down in the front, except right in the very middle of the front row. Hey, so uh, a couple things um, before we get going here. Uh, by the way, if you weren't here the other day, um, I'm Sam Richards, and this is my, I, my almost, this marks the, oh man, I don't know how to say it. Uh, I've been teaching for 39 and a half years. 39 and a half, dude. That's crazy, right? Uh, and I started teaching by accident. The first class I ever taught was uh, at a, at a, they needed, they, there was an emergency at a, at a community, a two-year college at, at, in Toledo, and uh, University of Toledo. And uh, I was, um, so they called over the social department in the main campus. I was a master's student. I was 24 years old. And, and so they said, do you have a grad student who could come over and teach? And I said, yeah. And they, and they asked me, and I said, yeah, I'll go talk to them. So I went over and talked to the person who was hiring, thinking that uh, this is the only, only one story about me, and then we're going to have a class, um, thinking that uh, it was going to be a class related to sociology or something, something I, that I knew something about. Anyway, the, the, the person says, I said, what's the class about? He said, well, it's cybernetics and human ecology. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I had taken a, a, a human ecology class, so I had some sense of what that was. Um, I think I got a B in it, so it's not like I got an A. And, uh, and then I, but I didn't know what cybernetics was. So I said, well, can I think about it? And the guy said, yeah, no problem. You got like 10 minutes because the class is meeting down the hall. And I said, all right, whatever, I'll teach it. So I went down the hall. And I walked in the classroom, and I asked, the, the first thing I said to the class was, hey, does anybody know what cybernetics is? And, uh, and nobody did. And I said, okay, well, this is going to be a lot of fun, because I don't know what it is either. And I'm supposed to be teaching, so I guess we're going to have to figure it out as we go along. And uh, that was my introductory, my introduction to teaching, meaning that I walked into the classroom and revealed as a 20, I was 24 years old. Um, you know, I was probably slightly more of an idiot than I am today. But uh, today I know maybe just a little bit more than I knew back then. I would say that. But in any case, uh, the idea being that I, one of the things that teachers have a difficult time doing often, oftentimes is... Um, revealing that they don't know anything or that they, there's a lot that they don't know or however you want to say it. And, but I, the very first thing I ever said to a classroom in the very first class I ever taught was, I don't know anything about the subject matter. So for me, it really kind of re revealed, it's like, it's like I walked in naked. And, and in a way, what that taught me was that it's kind of cool to start out with the idea that you really don't know anything. And, uh, or, there, or not that I, you don't know anything, but the, the world is so incredibly complicated that it's not possible to ever imagine that oneself really knows a lot. Because it's, it's like we might know a lot, but there's a billion times more than to know from whatever you know. Or I don't know how to say that. But you, you know what I mean? It's kind of like the universe. Or like death, you know, like we're all going to die. And we think like, oh, we're going we're gonna to die. And we're going to leave our bodies and we'll be dead forever. It, it's like, no, 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 hang on. Like, yeah, we can't take anything with us. And oh, yeah, we're going to die. No, no, hang on a second. No, you're going to die. You're going to leave our bodies. Nothing, nothing is going with us. Every single one of us is going to be dead dead. And nothing, everything that we value, I will no longer be in this classroom. I will no longer teach every, my watch, my be, everything, man, nothing. It's all going. But you can't contemplate that. It's really difficult to hold that, you know, kind of like the size of the universe. So in any case, uh, 
I think it's, it, that has, uh, uh, the reason I start with that, well, first off, I have no idea why I started with that story, but, uh, but I did. So let me pivot and then make something out of it. And what I'll make out of it is that that's largely, so we're going to start there today. We have four volunteers today who are going to uh, tell us what they know about a topic. And then we're going to see where we go. But before I get to that, um, I just want to say the following. Can you, can you just put, there, there are two things that are happening, right? One, um, in May, my wife and I, along with a colleague, Ben Park from uh, Brandywine, we're doing a, study, a two-week study abroad course in Korea, and it's really cool. Uh, it's, gonna, it's a really, really cool experience. So if you're looking for a, a summer study abroad course, um, talk to me after class. Next one, uh, there's also a class on American Indian culture and thinking that's happening now. But the cool thing about this is it doesn't start until two Mondays from now on, on the, uh, the 22nd. So that means if you have some class that you're taking and you realize that it really kind of sucks and you don't want to take it, this one will be available to you. And there's a trip to the uh, White Lake and, and Red Lake Reservation in Minnesota that you can go to in May. And the final thing is, next one, there is a, this class on Korea that is being taught at four, a 400 level. I said that I would announce it. So um, if you're interested, see me on any of those classes. See me after class. All right? All right, man. So wait. You can just blacken the screen first. All right? While I say something. Okay. So wait. If you are, uh, you can't stand on the walls next to the, the lights because there's light switches around the room, and then what happens is, you know, you hit them with your backpack, and we go dark, and, you know, that kind of thing. All right. Um, so here's the thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak both to you and to the stream right now, um, to people who are watching on the stream. Um, so uh, for you all, um, the, the class, we spend a lot of time working with student volunteers. By the way, if you come in late, there's always seats in the front. So you just got to come down to the front, okay? We spend a lot of time working with student volunteers. And the class only works because students, you all, who are here in the room, are willing to volunteer to come up here and talk about things, okay? And, and it's awesome for me because, A, I don't have to listen to myself, and I'm tired of listening to myself. It's awesome for you because you don't have to listen to me either, and that's awesome for you that we really get to share in the experience of developing an understanding about particular topics that are out in the world, okay? So the most important thing, this is for the stream. If you can put me in, put me in green, uh, team. Um, look, these are students. And people in this room are between the ages of mostly 18 and 22, maybe 23. There might be a few people older than that, but we are, they're students. They're not experts. Nobody is expected to be an expert. We all have this thing that happens to us. Maybe some of you have this with your parents. But as we get older and we look backwards, we have this idea or this fantasy that we were smarter than young people are today. And we're not. I was not well, it's pretty easy with me because I, I am very clear about the fact that I wasn't very smart. And uh, if I would have been asked, if I was in a class like this and I would have been asked to volunteer and come down to the front and take a microphone and start talking about some topic, um, I, I, know I wouldn't have had anything to say. It, could have, I, it didn't ma wouldn't have mattered what the topic was. I wouldn't have had anything to say. I'm blown away, actually, by how much, how smart you all are when, however... Hang on, hang on, I want to go back. That's about a topic. So if I would have said, hey, tell me all you know about X, Y, or Z, I wouldn't have had anything to say. But if, I, if someone would have asked me, hey, Sam, like with cybernetics and human ecology, we know you don't know about cybernetics and human ecology. But what do you think? What do you think it is? And I would say, well, I don't really know. Well, what do you think? And then I would say, well, I think cybernetics, it sounds like da-da-da, and human ecology is this. And then they would have asked some follow-up questions like, okay, well, okay, that's a good start. So now let's go back to cybernetics. How about, 
And then they would have just kept asking me questions. Eventually, I would have revealed that I actually know some. I actually have something to say within the context of what I see in the world, where I'm standing in the world. And I can only see the world from where I'm standing. So if I've never left the state of Pennsylvania, what that means is, well, I have a lot to say from the perspective of somebody who has never left the state of Pennsylvania. And that's pretty cool because there are other people in the class, for example, let's say, who have lived all over the world. And, you know, for them, it's so fascinating to hear from someone who's never left the state of Pennsylvania. Yo, right here in the second row, man. Yeah, you got a lot of seats. There's seats, seats all over. Okay, so you understand. It's so fascinating to hear from lots of different people from many different perspectives. And so all we can do is speak from our own perspective. And from our own perspective, we actually know a lot. Okay? So, uh, all right. Um, usually, when, here's another thing I want to say to the stream. Uh, when, when we ask, to you all, when we ask people to volunteer, they, you never have any idea what you're going to talk about. So when you get a text from Leah, who you'll meet next Tuesday, I think, and, and she says, hey, can you volunteer today? And you ask, hey, what's the top of the subject matter? She's going to say, I can't tell you. I'm not telling you. Because it doesn't matter what the topic is. And I don't want, I'm not going to choose a topic that you know something about. So if you say, for example, oh yeah, I've studied immigration a lot in my life. I'm like, well, I'm not going to ask you, probably not going to ask you to talk about immigration, let's say. It's going to be something else, right? Okay, is that cool? Um, Regard, so to, in today's class, regardless of what people say, I'm going to push back on it because that's my job. And pushing back means that I'm going to ask follow-up questions. And I'm going to say, well, hang on a minute. But what, if you say that, what do you think about this other thing over here? And my job is to sort of encourage people to see lots of different perspectives on their different perspectives on things so that doesn't mean i disagree with them at the same time when i don't challenge people i mean when i don't ask follow-up questions it doesn't mean i agree with them so you you will never know what i think about a subject matter what people say when they get to the end of the semester generally speaking is they still have no idea what i think about something okay so um so it turns out that people today are all u.s citizens uh, but, you know, 20% of the class, 20% of you in the class are international students from outside the United States. And probably another 20% are people who have ancestry directly from outside of the United States. So you might be like, you know, Mexican-American or Polish-American, and you spent, you know, your first 12 years in Poland. And now here you are in the United States and that kind of thing. Okay? Is that cool? Um, so... Let's, uh, let's see. Gabriella, I want to start with you. Let's go. Come on. Gabby. You can, the easy, always when you volunteer, yo, mate, here, have a seat. Do you want to sit, sit up here? It's always less awkward when you sit. Go ahead, have a seat. That's off on. You can mostly just leave it on. All right. Hey, um. So, I, well, I kind of did, but you can introduce yourself to the class. Yeah, hold it really close. Yeah. The, the easiest way to do that, by the way, is if those of you who are volunteering, if you do something like that, and, you, and then you're always touching your chin, you're always going to be really close. Um, go ahead. A sophomore? Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Snyder County, PA. Yeah. Which county? Snyder County. Snyder? Is that up north? Um, no. It's um, eastern. Eastern? Yeah. All east right. from here. All right. Um, okay. So uh, can we go to the... All right. So here's, here's the... This is the class. Right here. Class. This is the class. This is the question we're going to answer. And... Gabby, should we say, should I say Gabriela or no, just, Gabby? Just, 
Just Gabby. Gabby is good? Okay. Um, so Gabby, here's what I want you to do. Um, mostly, so you're, you're Mexican-American. Yes. Speak Spanish. Yes. And have you, when did you come to the U.S.? Or did, were you born in the U.S.? I was born in the U.S. Have you spent time in Mexico? Or? Yes. Like what, how much? Like um, I spent some summers with family. I've spent, when I was younger, I spent like three months in Mexico. Mm -hmm. What part? Guadalajara. Guadalajara? Ah. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, what's the problem? Man? Think about the world today, all right? Now listen, remember what I said about you being like, because we, we, I just want to know, uh, this is purely selfish in a way for me, right? I, we've selected four people today, and I'm just really curious about what you all think is the problem. Because your generation, I don't know what generation, what generation are you, by the way? Gen Z. Gen Z? All right, Gen Z. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know anymore. I can't keep track. Uh, I, it's like people are always, I, I mean, Y'all, people talk, I watch social media, or I read, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, obviously this is what I do, right? Yeah. So people are talking about problems, right? Um, just from what you see, what's the problem? I've seen a lot about global warming problems and mm -hmm. racism still. Yeah, what do you see? Um, By the way, when I'm going to, I think when I walk, so, so what you want to, you're just speaking to them, okay. to the class, and I'll, I'll, we'll be engaging, but I, I think when I walk, so, and so what, yeah, what, okay, so first thing you said is global warming and racism. What, yeah, yeah what do you see? Um, in my own experience in a small town, I've um, dealt with a lot of race, uh, racial slurs thrown at me, and then on social media, I've seen a lot of global warming issues and post of how we can make the world better and slow down global warming. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, grab, let's take the racism piece. So slurs from people who, like random people or, oh, by the way, uh, you, we, we always take still photos, so we'll have still photos for you. Okay. Right? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so what, what do you, so tell me, say more about that. Um, random people in grocery stores, on the road, co and co-workers, customers, and students. People calling you racial, can you say what they call you? I mean, you don't have to, but like. Uh, I don't. You don't have to. No. Nah. <laughs> All right. So really? So people who don't know you are calling, calling, saying things to you? Yes. Do they have a reason to, do, has there ever been a situation when they have a reason to, like, first off, let me just say, like, you are okay, this isn't because I'm a white guy, okay, because I teach this class, so I, obviously, right, but, but, like, you do understand, it, it's hard, when someone doesn't have an up-close personal view of what you're saying, it's really hard to say, like, really? Like, seriously? So, like, so, just, can you say a little more, like, what? People just come up and they just say stuff? Or they yell stuff at you? or They mostly just yell and stare and give you weird glares. Mm -hmm. It's very uncomfortable being a person of color and being different. In yeah. Snyder County? It's, you live in a small town? Yes. I live in Sealands Grove, PA. Oh, dude, Sealands Grove. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, and so it's most, mostly, is there, a, is there a growing Mexican community there? Or community of immigrants? It has been declining. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Ah, so it grew, like Hazleton and certain ones, and then it started to decline. Yeah. When uh -huh. I was younger, it was, there was a lot more families. Currently, I think there's seven, eight families uh -huh. that are of Hispanic heritage. Uh-huh. So how, so, so say how it, so how is the, so the racism for you is something that's really there in your, direct life experience. Yeah. I mean, you would call this racism, like call, yeah. when people are saying slurs and so on to you. Yes. How do you respond? Uh, I, I get uncomfortable, but just ignore it. It's better to just keep going instead of trying to argue with them because 
they're so close-minded. Mm -hmm. So keep going, but you take, but you don't, but you keep going, but you keep going with that inside of you, right? Because it's in you. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What, what, uh, what, okay, so where else do you see, so racism is, is an issue. Yes. And so you're, so there are many, like we have this idea that people in your generation are much more comfortable with many people who are not like them. By the way, we're not talking just white people here, right? Yeah. You might, we might be in your case, but it's not like black and brown people aren't racist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or bigoted, whatever. There's, we, we can, we'll go into that later, however you want to say it. So are there people who are not white who also display racism that you see? Yeah, funny enough, one time I was called a Mexican racial slur by a Puerto Rican. Really? Yeah. Puerto, Puerto Ricans, what's up with that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they just feel some, Puerto Ricans just feel some kind of way because, you know, it's like the 51st territory or something. Right. Maybe. Dude, by saying what I just said, all the Puerto Ricans are going to be like, yo, what are you talking about? All right. So where else do you see, where else do you see racism? Because so this is one of your two pieces here. Where, are, where else do you see racism? I see that a lot on, well, it's no longer that much on social media, but uh -huh. every so often it'll show up. Uh -huh. And you would think that since nowadays we're supposed to be more progressive, you wouldn't see as much, but it still happens on uh -huh. social media. Okay. Um, okay, so global, so climate change. Yes. That's the second thing that you said. So what's the problem? The problem is climate change. What do you see? Um, the ozone weakening, um, we're running out of materials and resources. Um, the population is growing faster than the world can handle. Than the planet can handle with the yeah. resources. Uh -huh. And animals are going extinct a lot faster. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's pretty much what I've seen. And how, how is that for you, like someone of you, how old, you're, are you 19? Yes. So you're 19. So how, how much time do you spend thinking about global climate change? Um, probably like at least five hours a week. Yeah? So like constantly, every day? Yeah. I mean, you're thinking about it. Um, I mean, I think about it all the time. I mean, I wouldn't tabulate it at five hours. I might. I, I'll, bet, I'll bet if I could put a number to it, I'd say about five hours a week. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot, man. Dude, what would you say, bro? How, much, how often do you think about climate change? Put a, put a number to it. An hour a day? Some, it's in your mind in the, in the day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's intense, man. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yo. See, oftentimes what happened, do you know what just happened right there? Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Um, people were like, I don't know, being, questioning if that's true, if it's like something that people actually think of. Yeah, I th no, I think what you do, we, I, I think you hit a nerve. Yeah. And the nerve is like trying to, trying to uh, quantify something like thinking about climate change. So every, what we see, I see this happen all the time. It just sort of ripples through a room like, whoa, hang on a second. And now everyone's like, they have to comment comment on it because it really it's big like you know i think about it i think about it at least probably 10 hours a week i think about it every day every single day man okay so climate change and do you when you think about your future what are you thinking that we're screwed <laughs> seriously yeah oh damn like we're meaning like all of us but you in particular because i'm old and i'm gonna die no all, everyone we're all screwed in this world yeah in the planet wait how is that to, to walk through life at your age you're 19 years old thinking we're screwed i mean we've grown up in the economic crisis and covid there's nothing that's gone right for us uh-huh so i'm just ready for doomed to happen <laughs> Damn. All right. Dude. All right. Hang on. So my job is to give you some hope right here. Okay. Gabby. 
It's like, first off, yeah. dude, are you all, do you feel that, bro? Do you feel it, bro? Do you feel like you're kind of screwed? Really? Bro, do you have that? You're just chilling? Yeah. Do you feel that? You, yeah? Wow, man. Okay. All right, listen. So climate change, uh, it's, it's like we're in a really bad situation. Is there a, how much hope do you have, though, that, hey, we'll work, we'll, we'll work ourselves out of this? Do you have how much hope? I'll give it 20% hope. Oh, yeah? All right, that's cool. 20 is better than zero. Yeah. I, I actually have a fair amount of hope, by the way. It's not because I'm old and I'm going to be out of here much sooner than you are in all likelihood, but it's more that... It's, it's a challenge, and, you know, human beings were surprisingly capable of living up to certain challenges. So. Okay, so those are two things. All right, man, that's it. You're, you're golden. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. It's awesome. Uh, um, dude, you want to come up? Have a seat. Hey, hey by, by the way, you never have to sit on the table, but if you want to sit on the table, it's always a little more comfortable. It's a comfy table. It's a good table. All right. So listen, first off, does anybody have any gum that I could have? I'm like dying. I'm in need of some gum. You got some? Ah, oh, dude, you're the best. All right. So, bro, uh, so introduce yourself. All right. All right, here we go. So my name is Bo. Um, I'm in my second semester of my senior year. I am a major in criminology and IST. And if I had to say what I am, I'm just like European American, I guess. Uh huh. Would well, you know where your ancestry is from? Yeah, um, it's mainly from the whole entire area around the UK. I'm like, I'm Welsh, um, English, Irish, Scottish, yeah. that kind of stuff. Okay, I got you, man. All right. Um, where are you from in the US? I'm from Scranton. Scranton? Oh, dude, Scranton. All right. Okay, so listen. So you, so what's the problem? Bro? I think what we need to do is respect other people's opinions more. Okay, so one, so big problem for you is us not listening or respecting to other, other people's opinions. Yeah, I think a lot of times, I see it a lot online. Um, someone can have an opinion that they're entitled to, but... You know, it's not political or anything like that. No matter what, someone's going to be silenced for what they're saying or they're going to be ridiculed even though they're being perfectly rational. Even though they're just saying what they think or what they Exactly, think. yeah, their honest opinion. So do you, does this, do you see this in your own life, like on social media? All stuff? the time, yeah, every day. Yeah, in your life? Yeah. Being silenced? Yes. Like, so what kinds of opinions? Political opinions, to mm -hmm. say the very least. Oh, wait, you, uh, in your thing, you identified as leaning conservative. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning conservative, like central right. But, dude, like central right for some people would be like you're a far right neo-fascist. You know what I mean? If you, no, like, you know what I mean? Like, for people on the far left, neo-Marxist, even just leaning a little bit to the right, is like, oh, my God. Yeah, I, I can see it. <laughs> Bro. <clears throat> <laughs> That's funny. What kind of, so how do you experience it? Like, what do you, because this, this is a big issue, right? So strangely, you know, you, th here's your generation who's grown up with social media and all of these opportunities, you know, with these phones to, be, to just put our voices out there and to listen to other people's voices and so on and so forth, and yet to, like, be slamming each other down. So what? Can you just say, what, what, what else, what do you say more about what you're seeing? So, it depends on the internet where you go, whether it's YouTube or the site called Reddit. Um, Dude, I, Reddit's far left, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. I'm on I there know, all the time. I don't know how that is. Reddit's the front page of the internet. I have no yeah. idea. I swear it just becomes a thing. People just flock to one platform. Okay, all right. And I use Reddit a lot, so... I'm using different platforms. I'm not just talking about one group here, but um, for example, someone will say something like, you know what a subreddit is, yep. a thread. Um, 
there's no no rule really um, pertaining to what kind of opinion you should have, but moderators, because they have a certain opinion, they will silence someone just because their political opinion, they disagree with them. Yeah. Could, can you give me an example of a political opinion that you've shared or have that, like for example, let me, I'll give you one, right? Okay. So the, uh, because I'm not gonna, I, we, I'll, I'll give you one. Um, with the immigration, all of the immigrants on the southern border, we really need to do something about that. Like we, we really, we gotta handle that, that this is a problem. Right. Um, that would be, how about that? Okay. Wait, is that not really very radical? I can, I can, I can find something to talk about with that. So, All right, go ahead, yeah. Take for example, someone who's far left. Um, they wouldn't really see as much of an issue with that as someone that's more right. Because people who are more right, um, from my experience, what I see is they want everyone to be a citizen. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've had friends who are more left. Um, they say that immigration, the illegal immigration, is good for jobs. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to say my per personal opinion, if that's okay. Um, yeah, yeah, you can th throw it out. Okay, I'm just well, saying. Well, it's from what you see. But your personal opinion, here's the thing, though, yeah. right? And I, I want to be really clear about this. If I... Whatever your personal opinion is, if I push you a little bit, you'll shift that opinion in, in some other direction. Because, how, wait, how old are you, 21? Uh, 23. 23, so you're young. I mean, 22, like, sorry. 22, all right. So you're, so you're, you're, you're going to push the, your opinion is just, rel, it's, only, it's very short term, okay? But go ahead, throw, throw an idea out. doesn't have to be your okay. opinion, just throw an idea out, the people on the. Okay, I'm not going to share my opinion then. Um, hmm. <laughs> By the way, you should know that uh, those of you in the classroom, 25% of this classroom identifies as conservative, okay? I know this because it's the same every semester. 25% of the classroom identifies as kind of really liberal, and 50% of the classroom is right in the middle. And at any moment, the conservatives will take liberal positions, and the liberals will take conservative positions, and it just will all get mixed up. And... You know, that's just how things roll. But conservatives will tend to be silent because on a college campus because they will tend to be afraid of getting concerned about getting canceled or silenced or something. But it not it, that doesn't happen in here because you got to have key ideas. But throw the idea out. So I hear people with their argument why not just get a citizenship? Mm -hmm. Like, why be illegal when it's just something I don't see, like the purpose of like just coming here illegally, like unless you have to, you know, escape a financial crisis or any other of that sort. Mm -hmm. If you are capable, why not just get citizenship? Okay. And you'll be eligible for more jobs, more benefits, et cetera. Okay. And if you don't, if you're not capable, if you don't, if the U.S. if the U.S. government says like, hey, that's cool, but we're not taking any more applications, so like, whatever. Oh, and, well, at that point, I guess, come on in. I don't know. No, 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 <laughs> yeah, no. Hold it. Take a conservative position here. I want to just throw this out there. Take a conservative position. I, because I, I'll take it if you don't want to. It's pretty easy. But okay. take a conservative position. So it's like so you so, Gabby's family. Let's say Gabby's family. Did, Did your family come here legally or illegally? Uh, oh, they came here legally? All right. Well, you know, that's all right. It's any, it's a, Gabby's family, let's say, let's imagine they came here without documents. And they just were like, I just got, I, we got to feed, we got we to we gotta survive, so we're just going to come here. Okay. So what would a conservative say to that? Like if she came here illegally? Yeah. Um... They would most likely, it depends on how far conservative you are too, but you know, if you're very conservative, obviously you would disagree with that. They would okay. say, why, why does she just have it easy, for example? That's what yeah. they would say. Yeah, like why do you get to do that? And yeah. other people didn't get to do that. Right. Which is a fair comment. I mean, it's a fairness thing. Conservatives are really into fairness, you know? 
People, liberals, you think you're really into fairness? Conservatives are driven by the idea of fairness, right? There are going to be rules. We're going to set up rules. And the rules, if the rules aren't fair, then you got to go out and you got to change the rules. But there are going to be a certain number of rules, like in the case of immigration. You got to follow the rules. There are a lot of people that want to come to the United States. So it's like, look, follow the rules. And if you don't follow the rules, then we're going to have a problem. We're going to send you back home or whatever. So it's not fair for you to sneak into the country when somebody else has been waiting patiently for a response from the U.S. government saying you can enter into the United States now. And you're just like, yeah, fuck it. I'm just going to go on my own. It's like, that's not fair. That's a conservative idea. Okay, so when I say it like that, how is that? Can you stand behind that? How is that to stand behind? Conservatives are really into fairness. It, it will be viewed differently depending on where you stand politically. I know that. Because yeah. I know some people that would say conservatives are, you know, um, Germany in the 1940s, for example. Yeah, like I got you. Yeah, but those people are just, but they're being very narrow-minded and very bigoted. Well, yeah, but, you know, I know both sides can be like that, too. Yeah, definitely. Dude, definitely. It's very, it's, I'm actually often very impressed by how narrow people can be in their thinking. Okay, so the, so the problem for you, the main problem is like people need to be more tolerant of other ideas so that we can share ideas. As, and then what, what will happen if we do that? Okay, um, so I'm thinking, you know, we need to see common ground in our ideas Shush and think for a sec, like, take into account, even if they have a stupid argument, just think, is there anything rational about what they're saying? Maybe you can find common ground and make the future better, kind of work together on some ideas at least. Because I know the left and the right in this country is, in my opinion, it's becoming increasingly divided. And if we seek more common ground, we can agree on more things, and there will be a lot less violence, less riots from both sides, of course, and just less politicians screaming at each other <laughs> yeah. and all that. So I just want to push back on something here. You said even if they have a, a dumb argument or whatever, but maybe their argument is good, and you're actually... Like, if you listen to my argument, I make a, an argument, right? And you think it's dumb. My argument's dumb? No, hang on. You make an argument. I think your argument is dumb. Maybe I'm dumb. Like, what makes me think that I'm not the, the dummy, you know? Like, what is that? I think it's more of what you hear more often. Yeah. It's confidence, I believe. Someone yeah. can be unconfident, but they can seem like a liar when they're telling the truth. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And that's because they're not hearing their side of the story more often. Yeah. Or they're not being agreed with. Or they're not listening to the other side of the story more. That's true too. Yes. So, so I have a couple. So, a couple ideas here is that people think they're educated. Many people think they're educated, but they've spent their entire lives around people who think like them. It's like, how are you going to be educated if you spend your entire lives with people who are like you? Like, you can't be educated. Educated is seeing the world from a thousand different perspectives, or a million, or a billion, or a trillion, and so. When you, if you, for example, the good thing about kind of arguing with people from different perspectives is you get challenged, right? Right. So I think, you know, once in a while, of course, you do have to have a challenge, but I think that encourages critical thinking. And yeah. you can solve more problems with that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, man. It's all about thinking. That's what we're doing here is thinking. Um, okay. All right, dude. How was it to, how was it to, to come out as a conservative? Uh, I, you know, no, as a, as a, no, hang on, let me, fix, let me okay. change that. As a white guy conservative in social 19. <laughs> so I wanted to be careful about what I had to say today. Yeah. And I feel that most of the can, campus is more left-leaning, of course. So maybe Remember, there's someone out there who wouldn't like me because of my political opinions. Like, yeah. no matter what they are, as long as I'm like on a different political spectrum than them, they might just, you know, dislike you. Yeah. So I think people need to just get rid of that barrier and see you for 
your ideas themselves, yeah. not just your... Because conservatives and liberals, you can be on the same side, quote-unquote, but um, you can have very different arguments. I hear it all the time. Oh, yeah, totally. But they always single out people who identify something other than them, even though they might agree on the same things. Yeah, to, to, to first off, there's no, there's nothing that's all conservative or all liberal. I don't even know what those terms mean anymore, honestly. And I made a comment about, like, yeah, conservatives are really into fairness. It's like, well, yeah, that's true at a level, but it's also very contextual. Liberals are also into fairness. They just define fairness in a different way. But, but one thing that, first off, dude, 25% of this classroom is is Con identifies as conservative. So that would be like that entire section up there and half of this section here. It's a lot of people, you know? So that's why I'm having fun with, I identify as conservative. I lean conservative, by the way. So uh, I guess, because I'm also a white man. White man. It's just a thing. We just, eventually we be lean conservative. <laughs> anyway, bro. Uh, Nice job. job. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it. All right, man. Thank you. Yeah. Yo. Introduce thyself. Hello, my name is Yasmin Thomas, but I go by Yaz. I am a sophomore. I am an RHS major, and my track is physical therapy. Wait, RHS, Rehab? Rehabilitation and Human Services. Uh-huh. How'd you choose that, by the way? How'd you, how'd you end up there, of all places? Well, so my first goal of thought was to go into orthopedic surgery, but I was like, I'm not going to have enough money for that because of, like, farther schooling. So I was like, I might as well just start on the track of physical therapy, get that all set out and done, and then if I wanted to, I would go into like the doctor track later on in life. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. All right, man. Dude, just do that. Hold it like that. Put your thumb on it, and then you put your thumb right on your... Yeah, dude, right like that. Oh, awesome. Okay, so, uh, Yaz. Yaz. Yes, sir. Where are you from, by the way? I am from Irving, Texas, which is in Dallas County. Irving, Texas? Yes, sir. Did you go to one of those, like, really rich schools down there? I freaking wish. Oh, all right, all right. There are a couple of schools down there around Dallas that are, I mean, they have football stadiums that hold 30,000 people and that sort of thing. Yeah, Friday Night Lights. That's what oh, Texas damn, is known man. for. I had a student from one of those high schools in class a couple of years ago. I was blown away the stories he was telling. All right, so listen, what's the problem? You want the long list or the short one? Ah, Just give me the one that, that really jumps out for you. Is people not minding their business? People not minding their business. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Damn, dude. All right. <laughs> All right. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Whether it be like socially or politically, people don't know how to like stay in their own lane. They're always giving unrequited, like requ unrequested advice, or they're just like jumping in or butting in in something that literally doesn't require them to be there at all. Like okay. if I'm having a conversation between A and B you need to see your way out. Like, don't include yourself. Like, I don't need you there. Okay, what about groups, though? What about, what about people who are pushing for social change and they're out protesting in the streets and so on? They're not minding their own business. And so there's a difference between wanted attention and unwanted attention. Uh huh. So, right, like, ahead. if it's, like, a social cause or a social controversy that requires social ish, like, a social integrity between people then yes it is okay for you to be out there state your opinion or just have a good like interaction however if it is like literally an online joke between a group of people in a like demographic and then someone says the joke but the people in that demographic get it and you don't and then you get upset by not being included in that situation then you really can't get mad at them because that's not like some people just grow up different or people are in different lifestyles or in different organizations when they're younger or in their whole life. so where do you see where do you see that happening so is it black? Wait, how, what's your ancestry, by the way? As far as I know, I'm black. But like, are but do you? <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Thank actually. you. But, I can see too. Yeah, I look in the I mirror every day. I say, but, oh my god. Listen, actually though, no. But we're gonna talk about DNA stuff in here. It's like you'd be surprised at what you you miss. But I, like, do you identify? Do you have any like? Uh, uh, Afro-Caribbean? No, sir. 
Okay. All right. Got you, man. So you trade. So African American. I I make the distinction like this, just so you know, in the class. So African American trace your. These are terms that I'll use. Trace your ancestry to slavery in North America. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so where do you see the, like, where do you see the 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 the, the example you just gave about people like people having all sorts of experiences and then other people feeling as though they get left out of those experiences and they feel some kind of way about it. Where do you see that? So picture it, right? You're scrolling on Instagram, TikTok, whatever your social platform may be. And this says like, this parent does this. And it's like a little like funny skit or like a skit that showed like a certain issue. Like say in a black household, whenever you get a bad grade and your parent finds out, they ask for your report card. Next thing you know, you're like, I don't have my report card. And they're like, yes, you did. The school called me. Show me your report card. Next thing you know, they pull a belt out of nowhere and they're just waiting for you to show them your grade. But for other demographics, say like a person who's like not a person of color, but, but they're not, not be their parents' first intuition thought as to like whoop your child whenever they get a bad grade or don't like succeed like socially or mentally or academically. It's uh -huh. like not their first goal. But within people of color's like households, well, specifically mine, Grades was a big thing that you would get in trouble for. So that's why that was like a big thing that was like on the internet. And then people from the, you know, the demographic, they were like, that's child abuse, that's not okay, that's not right. And I'm just like, yeah, it isn't, it's okay. But I'm pretty sure we all know by now, our parents know it's not good, but at some time it's a point they're gonna learn on their own time. I just can't push them to learn something because either way they're gonna push it out of their mind and one ear out the other, so. So when you, that's an awesome example, by the way. When you see those, when you have those experiences, what do you do as Yaz, the black woman, African-American woman, I'll use African-American, okay? Or black, should I say black or African-American? It can make a chicken cluck, I don't really care. Yeah, all right, dude, dude. Awesome, man. All right. How do you... How is, how do you respond to that when you see that? Like, how do you, you're, wait, how old are you, 19? 20. You're 20. How do you as a 20-year-old Gen Zer, black woman from Texas, respond to that? Well, I'll go about my Southern Belle charm and just giggle at it and scroll on. I'm playing, I'm playing, I don't do that. Oh. Usually I look at it, screenshot it, send it on Instagram for my story to see, and then I send it to my best friend, and we do like shits and giggles, and we look at that for a little bit, and I just go back and look at him like, wow, next subject. And that's how I go about it. Hey, so what do you think about, um, what, else is, what, else, what else is the problem? Uh, I like to say people doing that weird thing where they say millennials are better than Gen Zers or, Gen Xers are better than boomers. I don't really like that because at some point of life, you're going to get to that stage and you're just gonna be as miserable as they are. So just like zip it, lock it, put it in your pocket, babe. I don't need to hear about it. <laughs> what else? I entertain y'all, don't I? Check out my uh, the, 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 is this check out my Comedy Central in like two years. Gonna see me on right, there. You heard it right here. Yeah, it started wow. right here, man. What do you think is what do you think is like an essential problem with so you you identify this issue between people of different age groups and age categories and stuff, right? Yeah. People need to just like oh, open up. How open do you feel people are of your general, like people around you are? Well, I feel like we need to start bringing back diaries. People keep posting everything. Buki, I don't need to know about your man cheating on you 13 times in a row. Let's none of my business, and I don't need to hear about you crying over him. That's mm -mm. So you think, as a, as a tw 20 year old, yeah. you're thinking actually people are sharing too much? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Huh. And what do you think that does for them or for us or whatever the case is? Like, what do you think? 
I feel like it started with the reality TV phase. Like everybody was having a TV show, spreading their business. Everybody's creating little storylines about their lives. And then once they got off air, they were like, why do people think I'm a bad person? I don't know, Gabby. Didn't you tell somebody they had a you know what? And then they deserve to you know what? Like that's like that's not something you can just showcase on television and expect people to not want to hold against you. You know what I mean? Like your words have impact, uh -huh. whether real or fake. Like you just can't be upset about that. So how many people around you that you know of think similarly to you? I like to say a good portion. Really? Of them. Yeah. Be because people, so many people of say like m of my generation have the idea that people of your gen, not me, because I, because I, I know people of your generation, right? But people have this idea that your generation wants to just be out in the world and have cameras on them and be famous and celebrities and all sorts of stuff, and they want to put their business out everywhere and what you, i'm hearing from you is actually for me and for people around me that's not really true yeah because like at some point doesn't it get tiring to hear about the celebrity who cheated on their partner the just celebrity that got into this controversy the celebrity that like causes this much problems in another area at some point you're just like well damn like that's what my neighbor down the street does i really need to know their business like that that's not going to impact my day-to-day -day life uh -huh. like it's just a normal situation that people blow out of proportion like somebody awesome. cheating on another person that is a terrible thing but if you put it on air, baby, they're going to blast you much harder than they would Rochelle and Mark or just like on the side in the corner who got uh -huh. cheated on two minutes ago. Uh -huh. Like you're a celebrity. You're in broad lights. You're supposed to be this quote unquote legend or individual that everybody loves and cherishes. You're not supposed to do no wrong. But yeah, I got you. Trust got me, you. you're going to have your little groupies who say that you can do no wrong. And then when you do wrong to them, they're still going to be. Yeah, yeah, no, they didn't do any wrong. Yeah. yeah. OK. What, what, uh, what else? Well, and go, let's go back to the, what's the problem? Pick out one more, and then we'll we will move on. What's one more problem that you're seeing out there? You know, out there that we just really probably should address. Um, racism within the uh, queer community, I guess. Racism in inside the com queer community? Yes. Yeah. What do you see? <sighs> well, people go with these weird stereotypes of grouping people along. People usually associate black lesbians with being masculine or dominant and stuff like that. And I'm just like, that's not how people are as a individual. Like, people's individual personality traits are how they dictate their life. Them being queer and in another part of their body doesn't correlate well. Because if you know, like, the stereotype of black women, they're strong, they usually perceive as masculine, and then once you put the label of lesbian on it, you're automatically considered a stud or a, you know what, a D word. Or butchy or whatever. Yeah, and them. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, um, okay, so, so racism inside of the queer community. Yeah. Right. With, with women and men, what, where you're talking about women, but men also? Oh, yeah, definitely. I see a lot of black men talk about their experiences with white queer men. Uh huh. And some of the things they be talking about is really like depleting in itself because you realize, like, wow, it's still going to hover over us no matter what. Because, like, they usually correlate black men in the gay community with being like, you know that like thing called jungle fever and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, dude, like and totally hypersexual. Like, ho like it's hypersexualizing yeah. of like black men, and they already go through that at a young age. And for you to like do it again and to adulthood, it's not basically breaking the cycle. It's making it much farther and much worse. And then people get yeah. mad at them when they do oversexualize themselves, yeah. and it's like a whole reverse cycle, I guess. So we so we have the idea that once we put these demographic groups together, like wh whatever the demographic, the disabled community, right? The the what, whatever the black community, the queer community, whatever, that everyone is all together, you know, all, all, all everyone in the queer community unites around the issues because everybody shares the fact that in some way they're LGBTQ, whatever. But for you, you're saying actually that, but that's just, it's, there, there are multiple layers of that and that's not really. Yeah, I mean, it's like Almost. a freaking tiramisu or a fucking, like, cheesecake. That thing has many layers. You just can't yeah. have one layer of something and be like, it's done. It's put, you have to put it all together if you want to fully enjoy something. So, uh, that's what's interesting. People on the outside of communities ha often have the assumption that communities are really bonded and united, which I, I don't know. Well, we, we only have those assumptions when we don't know that community and what it is. Once, once we, we're connected to the community, then it's easy to see, like, look, man, Everybody's different. Everybody has different perspectives and ideas. You know, you have you have like uh, you know 
black lesbians who are ultra conservative, black lesbians who are ultra liberal, black whatever. It doesn't really. It just. So it's just B, C. Open yourselves up to it. Yeah, because I would say people are people are a spectrum. Like literally, like physically, politically, socially, mentally, racially, they're all on the spectrum. Everything is changing. People are sifting different narratives, different definitions. So you might as well just yeah. like get used to change. But yeah. that's human behavior of not wanting to change. So yeah. Yeah. Listen, man. Can you just say that again? Get used to change. Like just say to the everybody right here. Like so you're speaking to the class. Like ho say it loud. Say it proud. Get used. I'm to black change. and I'm proud. Okay. Get used to change. It's always there. It's always happening. If you don't want to change, I'm sorry, Buki, but life isn't going to stop for you. It's not going to stop for anybody else. Go ahead and get that change in. Get that work in. You know, keep your head up. Dude. Awesome. Thanks, man. <laughs> Dude. Wait. Dude, awesome. <laughs> I, I I mean, okay, bro, you're on, man. Sounds good. Go, Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Dhruv. I'm, uh, I'm 19. I'm a sophomore, and my major is biomedical engineering, and uh, I'm from uh, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Montgomery County. Dude, hold it like, like that, yeah. Look like at that. All right. well, you did a nice job, though. You're, right. you're good. Um, hey, so, okay, what's the problem, bro? Wait, what's your background? I'm Indian. Like, like where were you born? Like, I was born in Chicago, but uh -huh. yeah, I'm first generation here. Yeah? Okay. Um, by the way, is your mom a good cook? She's amazing. What's her, what's her best dish? If you could boil it down to one. That's, that's, a, that's really hard. I know. I got you, man. But in case your mom's watching, okay, two. Two. Uh, her lentil soup. It's amazing. Yeah. What else? Anything else? Uh, does she make chole? Yeah, she does. She does. Not, 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 not too much though, but because I'm, I, I'm. I make a mean chole, by the way. Oh yeah. Yeah, I just want to say that. I gotta try some. I'm sure your mom's is better, but I'm just want to <laughs> put that out there, bro. So what's the problem? I think uh, I've uh, I've I've realized this a lot, but uh, I think stupid uh, superstitions. I think people fall under stupid uh, superstitions, and uh, I've been like on both sides of that actually. So I never, uh, yeah. Can you give me an example? Or give us an example? Um, to go like a little deeper into it, um, my mom, my father passed when I was really young. And uh, being a widow, I'm a Hindu, so uh, being a widow is actually looked down upon a lot. And uh, my mom really got alienated from a lot of people because of that. She lost a lot of friends because of that, which I think is really unfair. So can you explain to people in, in Hinduism and like what, like, what, you know, what happens? You know, historically, even historically, what women would take their own lives and so on yeah i mean it's really hard but uh there is a lot of uh i mean it just alien it doesn't help because um should i put closer oh yeah. my bad um but a lot of people don't understand that obviously it's not when, when you lose uh your husband it's it kind of sucks that you lose all your friends too and uh my mom being in chicago uh after my father passed away she was actually like basically left alone even some family members kind of disconnected and it really messed her up so there's something inside of the culture connected to Indian culture connected to Hinduism. Yeah. That when women loot are, are left alone, when the husband dies, and historically speaking, many women would throw themselves on the funeral pyre. Yeah. Hindu women. Yeah. Right? Hindu women. I mean, take their own lives. Cause, yeah. Yeah. It's just crazy. It so is, that's a crazy is. superstition. It is a crazy superstition. Yeah, my mom. Yeah, my mom has been the the back end of that. It's not been. It's been rough, but she figured it out, and she's she's happy now. So it's it's all good. Cool. What? How old were you when your dad died? I was five years old. Yeah. Dude, five. Yeah, he uh, had liver cancer. It was it was a sad. Yeah, I was sad. Yeah, that really impacts you, man. You remember my dad was nine. I mean, I was nine when my dad died. Oh yeah. Remember? Yeah. I'm sorry about so, that. So, no, it's okay. Um, what is, uh, I mean, hang on. Thanks, bro. Yeah, of course. Sorry to hear about you. No, of course, of course. Yeah. So what's kind of interesting is that I randomly pick four people out. We have four different things that people say, and you start with superstition. Yeah. 
And so where else do you see this? I mean, I see it. I've actually lost a lot of friends because uh, I have a friend. Um, he, it was a long time ago, but he's very competitive academically, and he wouldn't tell me where he got his internship because I was looking for an internship. And it's because there's this thing in a Hindu culture called the bat. It's called like a bad eye, where uh, if you tell yeah. too many people something, uh, you, ha you get bad luck, and he didn't want to tell me it, and it caused a lot of problems. Uh-huh. The, the bad, bad eye. eye. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, I think it's something like that. I, I forgot the exact name of it. That's what it is. Yeah, evil eye. Yeah, evil, evil eye. eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah people, people often wear a, 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 like a medallion of an eye to really yeah. fight that. Okay, so he wouldn't tell you anything about it, so he wouldn't jeopardize his. Yeah, I hope he doesn't see this. I'm still friends with him. Yeah, that's all right. He does. So at least you'll find out. Do you know where his, <laughs> where his internship was? Yeah, it was at Drexel. Uh, all right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So what else? What, what else is the problem? I think, uh, I think people who just feel the need to project their opinions. I think someone, I don't know if someone else said that, but uh, yeah, they just feel the need to put their opinions out or they like bringing up topics in like the worst times. I don't know how to explain that. Like, I'll be like out for dinner like with my family. I haven't seen them in a long time and someone will ask me like what I think about like the Israel Gaza thing and I kind of just get really like blindsided by it. Uh-huh. So, so people, people are random but but isn't there it's like but it's also good to randomly bring up topics, right? To force ourselves to talk about things that we're not used to talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I just I just I don't know. I'm not really a person who's uh politically as uh inv like involved in like I don't know as much as I should. But Wait, uh, why should you know? I think it's just because, I mean, you should know what's happening in the world and a lot why, of... Why should you know what's happening in the world? Because, I mean, strike up conversations also just... I mean, I don't, that's, that's a really hard question to answer. Well, let me ask you this. Let me help you. When you learn, if you learn something more than you know about the conflict in Israel and, Gaza, and, and Palestine and Gaza, how does that change? What does that do for the, the world? I think it gives it, it gives light to the this like the conflict and kind of just makes people like understand like what's really happening around the world and kind of pushing a better cause. Okay, okay but how 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 does it do that? More people uh, say they make their opinion like more known. Yeah, well, how but how does it do that? Let's just say if you could snap your fingers, if I could snap my fingers, and everyone in this classroom knew what I know about the Israel, the conflict in Israel and Palestine, right? How would that change the world? Uh, change their opinions? Yeah, if everyone knew if everyone knew what I knew, I could just download my brain into everybody in the classroom. How's that going to change? Yeah, it would change people's opinions on but, it. But how would that change the world? Uh, I mean, people with changed opinions could try to push for, like, I don't, I don't like, really know what you're trying to go for. I, I'm, like, I'm, I'm trying to show you what you're trying to go for, but I don't know. Well, here, let's just stick with you. Okay. You, I download my brain into your brain on this topic. Right. Everything I know about the world, right? Yeah. How's that going to change the world? How are you then going to go change the world? Tell other people my opinion and talk more about it. If that's what you're talking I don't have an answer. I'm just wondering. I'm oh, just yeah. I mean, I will, if, if, I, if you gave me like an opinion about it and someone brought it up, I would express my opinion and maybe some other people change their opinion and that opinion could become like a more just bigger general opinion. Okay, okay but, but let's, let's be, be – let's assume, assume that that's, that's not, not – let's assume that's not – I'm just pushing back. back. Remember I said earlier yeah, I was yeah, going to yeah, push no, back some? No worries. I, yeah. I mean, I'm not yeah. – No, no, I got you. I got you. So – I'm just because, because what, what happens, happens when you're in college, college like, like you know, you, you just, just randomly put up there, there like, oh, I should know more. And yeah. I'm asking, why should you know more? Because I think I'll be able to have more conversations. And, and those conversations will lead to what? I mean, honestly, I think when people bring up conversations like that, like to me, when it's like random, I don't really know where, like where it's going. I think they're just trying to change my mind. I don't, I don't really know where you like. Probably tell more people your opinion. Like I don't really, I don't really like to talk about that stuff too much. I don't. I, it's just a lot for me sometimes. Okay. You, is, and how is how how do you feel about that? How is that for you? That you know, it's it's a lot for you, and you know. Like I think a lot of people uh, giving me like a bad looks, 
Like a lot of people, like, I remember, like, I was, uh, it was in the classroom and someone asked me a question. I was like, I don't really know too much about that. And they're just kind of like, how or why? So I think it's, it makes me feel kind of bad sometimes because people can definitely be judgmental when you don't know about it. But, uh, I mean, it's just an uncomfortable area for me where I just kind of like to avoid. Hang on. Hang on a second. Brother. <laughs> yes. Dude. You have something to say to him, right? Don't you? What would you say when you first came up here? About staying in your lane or whatever it was? Listen, I said, even if it doesn't include, if it's a fully aware, something that has morality, you for it. Your goal in life is to be a good human being. Being a good human being means you have to bring attention towards things that make you uncomfortable. If it makes you uncomfortable, yes. But think about the people who are involved in this situation. They're more than uncomfortable. They're literally dying off. So that's what I like to think about. Yes, I'm uncomfortable now, but I'm in comfort later. That's my big reasoning. See, that was the opposite of what I thought you were going to say. Damn. No, I, I thought you were going to say, hang on, can I say what, what you were, were going to say? say? But, but you, you didn't, didn't say it? In your other, other incarnation? incarnation? <laughs> I'm following from what you said earlier. What she said earlier was like, "Hey, listen, man, don't don't be don't be minding other people's business. Like it doesn't matter what other people think of you or or mind thinking about your business doesn't really matter." Yeah. Did you say that? Yeah. Okay, that too. All right, so go with that. All right. Okay, so um, no, so the I guess the issue, the reason I'm pushing on this, it's really cool that you're raising it, is because you're you're in college. We're all here. We're here at the university. We're in college. And we have the idea that, hey, you know, we're here to be educated and we should all be thinking and being educa educating ourselves as much as possible because it's only by educating ourselves that we're going to make the world a much better place and da-da-da-da-da. And then you said, like, oh, I feel bad if I don't know. Yeah. Do you know how much you don't know, bro? Oh, yeah. I definitely don't know a lot of things. Dude. No, it's not a lot of things, bro. Do you know how much you don't know? No. Do you know how vast the universe is? Do you know how many stars are in our galaxy? Absolutely not. There's about 100 billion. Oh. And you know how many galaxies there are? No. About 100 billion times 100 trillion. It's like an infinite amount. And basically it's infinite, man. Yeah. Okay, okay that's, that's how much knowledge there is out in the world. Yeah, I just like I think it's more about like trending topics, like when uh when it's like presidents and like the whole presidential candidate stuff, like because yeah. the the president uh the debates not the debate just happened yesterday. Yeah. My friends were talking to me about it. I kind of just was not up to like right. I was not up to what knowing what was happening at okay. all. Okay. And whoever your friend was knew like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit about it. Yeah. Compared to everything there is to learn about it. Yeah. All right, man. Okay, well, from my, uh, from where, from where I'm sitting, awesome, man. I like, I, so th what I heard from you is superstitions and like, and learning or engaging. Yeah. I got a lot of superstitions that I feel like we would do well to get rid of, actually. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. Dude, thanks. Yeah, of course. All right, man. All right. Um, so hang on one sec. So we're gonna we're gonna do first off. I just want to who has a question that they want to. Who would like to, who has a question you want to ask? Dude, I was just wondering uh, what you were holding in your hand this whole time. What I holding in my hands, dude. Same thing. This guy. Hang on. I'll let him answer the question. Bro, what are you holding in your hands, man? It's like a type of bead that people either use for a type of praying or uh, they can just use it to play around with it. And it's usually made of different stones. So I think the one that you're holding is made out of wood, I think. Yeah. And yeah, mine is made out of amber. From amber? Yep. Can I see? What? Where? Oh, yeah. These are, uh, I get those in Cairo. Oh, that's nice. And, and uh, where are you from? I'm from Kuwait. So... So you're Muslim. Yeah. So these, yeah, these are, yeah. It's nice, right? Yeah, Like it is. for me, they, I always have beads, bro. Answer your question. I always carry beads because it, remi it allows me to focus and remind myself of the fact that I'm going to die. Okay? 
which keeps me really present in the moment because I need, I need for time to slow down and I need to, I'm, I'm praying, praying all, even, 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 even though, though I'm, an, I mean, I'm praying all the time, even though I'm an atheist, but you know, what are you going to do? Uh, wait, we so okay, so listen, can you go, can you guys get your phones out really fast? Pull your phones out and turn your Wi-Fi off and turn your Wi-Fi back on. This is, this is just a test. Oh, yeah, sorry, man. Is this? <laughs> All right, so just go, go to, uh, we're just doing a test here because we're going to start attendance on Tuesday. Um, go to Canvas, go to quizzes, uh, look for the test quiz, and just answer the question. And you, got, you have to turn your Wi-Fi off and back on when you get to your seat because that's going to make it strong. How, who, can't, who, who right now can't get on Wi-Fi? Really? Wait, hang on. Wait, you're, on, you're not on Wi-Fi? And you turned it off and put it back on? Wait, just keep, wait for a second. You're in? Yeah, so look for the test quiz. Oh, you did? Okay. Did, is it on? Wait, Julie, it's working. It's, did anyone do it? You did it, right? It's good? You're good? You got it? Wait, how many still can't get on? Because I want to get a sense of this. Yo, seriously? You turn your Wi-Fi off and back on? You're on Penn State Wi-Fi? You're on now? It just waited. All right, we're working on it on Tuesday. Hey, listen, man. Uh, have a have a uh, have a safe weekend, and we'll see you on Tuesday. All right. All right. Thanks, bro. Dude, I forgot.